This owner is running his business into the ground, like he did with his previous business. Worse, he takes money from his wife and stepdaughter to pay for all his blunders. This is one of the most explosive episodes of Kitchen Nightmares. I pay your bills too. Relax, 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 relax. An incompetent manager, simmering family conflicts, and a refrigerator that could compete for the title of the show's most unsanitary are the ingredients for disaster. Matters take a nosedive when Gordon investigates the contents of the refrigerator. Ground beef! Half of it's fat, you idiot! This establishment could give Dylan's restaurant a run for its money in the competition for the title of the filthiest restaurant ever featured on the show. At the start of this party nightmare, we travel to the outskirts of New York to meet the quiet community of West Nyack, home to Vic and Yolanda Flores, a Mexican couple that is far from being good restaurateurs. In 1998, they opened Fiesta Garibaldi, a restaurant inspired by Fiesta Mexico, which has been popular in New York for decades. The Flores bet turned out badly though as Fiesta Garibaldi closed in 2006, two years before the episode of Kitchen Nightmares. But they didn't learn their lesson, as they soon wanted to open a new restaurant, Fiesta Sunrise. Since they had no money, they had to rely on cash from Yolanda's daughter, Patty. Rather than acknowledging his stepdaughter's significant sacrifice, Vic proves to be an inept manager who shows little concern for the restaurant's issues. His lack of financial investment in the business gives him the position of authority without any personal stake. In contrast, Patty finds herself in the opposite predicament, having contributed all the funds for the restaurant, but needing help to wrest control from Vic. She bears all the financial responsibility and risks, yet lacks the authority to shape the restaurant's success. Patty and Yolanda initially managed to attract some customers, though eventually the restaurant lost its reputation. Yolanda has tried to change the menu of Fiesta Sunrise, but Vic forbids her. According to him, people love the food at the restaurant. Also, Vic makes the decisions regarding the decor. Let's say he doesn't have the best of taste. But hey, look at that stuffed chili pepper hanging on the wall. His name is Manuel, and he's Vic's best friend. Meanwhile, Patty is drowning in debt from keeping the restaurant going under, and her mother begins to regret including her in the business. It's a pretty complicated scenario, though there's no impossible challenge for Gordon Ramsay. Maybe I'm too late. Why do you say that, Ramsay? Oh, now I get it. The restaurant sign says Grill 303 instead of Fiesta Sunrise. Maybe the party ended too soon. Upon meeting Vic, Ramsay learns that the sign has been there for a year and a half. The Flores don't have the budget for a new logo but they did allow themselves a tequila dispenser at the entrance. Ramsey can't resist having a drink and finds the alcohol a bit too strong for his liking. What a great appetizer, though. When Ramsey sits down to eat, Vic mentions that they have 120 seats, but only two tables are occupied that day. As for the menu, each option is an odd combination of different Mexican dishes. If that wasn't enough, Ramsey discovers an old sticker on the menu. Guess what? Fiesta Sunrise's menus are the same ones from the extinct Fiesta Garibaldi, the restaurant that went out of business. Now that's what I call saving money. Finally, Ramsey gets his Fiesta combo. Looks like someone's been sick on my plate. I understand combining food, Vic, but please don't ever do that again. As for the taste, Ramsey finds the chicken too dry, the rice was cooked days ago, and the meat is tough to swallow. Stop off at the tequila bar get drunk, and then enjoy the food. Excellent business tactic. But seriously, the pina colada was the only thing Ramsey enjoyed about the meal. Following that, he gathers the Flores family to discuss the main problem, Vic. Also, Patty reveals that they are losing half a million dollars a year and are $850,000 in debt after only 18 months of service. That happens when you put a failed manager in a new business. Later, during dinner service, Ramsey inspects the kitchen. His first discovery is a supposedly fresh rice that has been in storage for days. Then he finds a pile of accumulated fat and chives purchased five months ago. That's a lot of freshness. But the worst is a smelly, curled up fish and oxidized steak wrapped in foil. Every container of meat he opens drips blood like a fountain. 
Although blood may be better to touch than whatever Ramsay has on his fingers now. We next move on to the main course, the fridge inspection. As surprising as it sounds, we haven't got into the worst of it yet. The first thing Ramsay finds are vats of poorly stored prepared meat. As disgusting as it looks, they use that to stuff the food with. Alfred, it's fat, you idiot! It's fatter than you! Patty approves that comment. After that, Ramsay discovers a barrel of refried beans that might as well be cement mix. Outraged by the restaurant's quality control, Ramsay challenges Vic to show the barrel of beans to the customers. As the manager refuses out of embarrassment, Ramsay takes the beans to the dining room and stops the service. If you'd just seen where it's come from, like I have, you wouldn't be eating it. Very sorry. Facts. Hearing those words and seeing the barrel of beans, customers begin to leave quickly. After that, Ramsay chats privately with Yolanda, who admits that her husband has become a burden and the primary victim is her daughter. Speaking of Patty, she has invited her husband, Don, to the restaurant to meet Gordon. It turns out that Don and Patty's relationship has been affected by her duties in the business. But that's not the real problem. Don is furious with Vic for how he treats his wife, especially when he helps pay Vic's mortgage. I paid your mortgage here, you jerk. For one month, I paid $50,000. Things begin to get heated quickly as the two argue back and forth. You don't even have a job. You're hunting. You're fishing. This is your, your job. Oh, I pay yeah. my bills. And in fact, I pay your bills too. Bills. Ah! Relax, 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 what? relax, relax, relax. Oh, things got hot pretty quickly there. Thankfully, Ramsey stops the altercation before they hit each other and takes Vic outside to de-escalate the situation. Later, Gordon tries to try something new in the kitchen but an invasion of roaches thwarts his experiment. It is gross to think how many people ate on those plates without knowing that. Gordon immediately calls an exterminator to get rid of the infestation. Some pride! Do you understand the word pride? And he also scolds the manager. Fair and necessary. The good part is that Vic finally acknowledges Fiesta Sunrise's problems and is actually embarrassed by them. After the exterminator finishes his job, Ramsey returns to the restaurant to motivate the owners. Despite so many problems, they are not going to give up. Before reopening the restaurant, Gordon clarifies to the cooks that they will work only with fresh ingredients, but they need more convincing. They speak English. They're just being clever by ignoring me, yes? They didn't understand Gordon's advice because none of them could cook rice well. Therefore, Yolanda had to get into the kitchen for the first time. Meanwhile, the customers get impatient for their food. They will keep waiting because Ramsay just found black spots coming from the broiler on a dish. In that situation, Gordon runs out of ideas to help them, while the customers leave disappointed. At the end of that disastrous night, Ramsay warns the Flores that he needs to return to New York to think of a better rescue plan. The next day, Gordon returns to Fiesta Sunrise with a Mexican food expert, Juliet, who owns the finest Mexican restaurant in Manhattan. After that, he introduces the owners to the renovations his team made. He got rid of the clutter, added tablecloths, removed the old drapes, and added shutters instead. As for the menu, Ramsey scaled it down quite a bit to focus only on the best of fresh Mexican cuisine. Touched by the changes, Vic promises he won't make any more mistakes and will rise to the challenge. After Chef Juliet spends the entire afternoon showing the staff the new dishes, Fiesta Sunrise is finally getting ready for its relaunch. As a result, the Flores are a bit tense, but also excited. You're like a sumo wrestler upside down, smile! <laughs> Those who are far from smiling are the cooks, who keep making disasters in the kitchen, even with Juliet's help. But let's focus on the good news. The few dishes that are coming out are pleasing the customers, and Vic is doing well as manager. As the restaurant reaches a good pace, the mayor of West Nyack shows up to support the restaurant. Fortunately, he ended up loving the food and promised to return in the future. At the end of a successful relaunch, Ramsey congratulated the staff, especially Vic, who was excellent throughout the service. He did have some passion for his job after all, it seems. To end his visit on a high note, Gordon shows everyone the new sign outside with the restaurant's proper name, which was definitely a much needed upgrade. 
I'm not kissing you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Vic isn't that bad of a guy. Just a little distracted, perhaps? Also, he proudly declares that Fiesta Sunrise will become one of the best Mexican restaurants in town. So, now we ask, did they achieve that goal? What happened to Fiesta Sunrise after the Kitchen Nightmares episode aired in 2008? I want to give some drama to this part, but it's challenging. Fiesta Sunrise closed before the original episode even aired in November of 2008. To understand why, let's first look at a few things that happened before the show aired. Foremost, the reviews. There's only one review on Yelp, which has nothing to do with the restaurant. Twelve other reviews were removed for violating the site's terms of service. They were all posted after the episode aired, so we can assume people were joking about the show. I found more reviews on menu picks, where Fiesta Sunrise is rated 4.2 stars based on 11 votes. The only two reviews rate the food as excellent, but they were posted long after the restaurant closed. Beyond that, there is no concrete information about the customer experience at Fiesta Sunrise. It's as if the internet wants to erase everything about that place. The only thing we can say for sure is that the IRS seized the restaurant because the Flores did not pay back taxes. In 2007, they had to close temporarily because of that same problem, though they eventually ran out of luck. Patty's credit was probably destroyed by the impending financial crisis of 2008-2009. Besides, there was also a stabbing at the restaurant shortly before it closed. There is not much information about that incident either, not even a police report. But that is what all sources say. If I had to assume anything, the stabbing did not involve the owners, as we would have a lot of information if that had happened. Today, the former Fiesta Sunrise site is occupied by a branch of a construction company called Durante Rentals. And as you well know, a lack of information feeds the creation of theories. There were so many crazy rumors that one Reddit user tried to deny several, such as that Vic died of a heart attack, and that Patty had a sex change operation, so she wouldn't be linked to Kitchen Nightmares. I couldn't find anything about Vic and Yolanda, but I'm pretty sure Patty didn't have a sex change. Why? She works at Fiesta Mexico, a Mexican restaurant in Orangeburg, New York, owned by her relatives. The place enjoys 3.4 stars on Yelp based on 125 reviews. They're not spectacular numbers, but we should remember that they have been open since 1984. Patty has been part of their business for a few years now. It's hard to know what role she has, though she always appears in the owner's photos. And so, we come to the bittersweet end of a restaurant doomed to fail. Even though Ramsey tried to help, there was no saving this place. What's your take on Fiesta Sunrise? Was it dirtier than Dylan's? And if you haven't checked out a recap of the Dylan's episode, you should now. It might be the only other restaurant as filthy, or worse, than Fiesta Sunrise.